Hello, welcome to this screencast about Apache Wicket. Today I will show you the basics of Wicket, that is, um, pages, components and models. My name is David, I work as a consultant and trainer and you can find out more about me and read my blog at davidtanzer.net. Let's get started. As you can see, I use Sublime Text for all my editing. You can, of course, use Eclipse or any other IDE which should have some advantages. Um, I use Gradle to build the project and later to run the web application. So I have created a skeleton project which pretty much follows the standard Gradle or Maven layout. We have a source directory. This source directory contains two main sections, main and test, and the main section contains three actual source folders. Java, Resources and Web App. The Web App Source folder only contains the Web XML deployment descriptor. I have already created it. But first let's have a look at the build file. I used the Java plugin because, well, it's a Java project and the Chatty plugin because we want to use the Chatty web server to run the web application. I have also used the Sublime Text plugin because I use the Sublime Text editor. You can use the Eclipse plugin, for example, if you want to use Eclipse. This project has already several dependencies. We need Wicked Core and later Wicked Choose, both in the latest version. For the backend, we need JPA and a database that's Hibernate Entity Manager and the HSQL database. And later, we will also need GUnit to test everything. The rest of the build file is not that important. It's a little bit of bookkeeping and configuration for the Sublime Text plugin. Let's go back to the Web XML deployment descriptor. As you can see, I have configured the wicket filter to be applied to every URL pattern. So all the URLs are passed through the wicket filter and are part of the wicket application. The wicket filter needs an application class name. The application class is the the, ba the the main entry point of your application. So let's create this application class. As you can see here in the deployment descriptor, I want to name my application class newsletter application and it has to be in the package net david tensor wicket newsletter. So let's first create the file and create an empty class in the correct package. The class must extend the wicket web application class. So let's add that. Uh, add the import to. Uh, this is something where an IDE will probably help you a lot, but it's not that bad. And Web application is an abstract class and we need to implement a method that returns the home page. For this we need to import the page class. The method that returns the home page uh, is called get home page, and we don't need it yet. So at the moment we return null. Let's build everything to see if everything works. And it seems like I got the import wrong here. Of course, I have to import the page class, not the web page class. 
but now everything should compile and for now we're finished with the application class. The fact that there is a method get home page and something like a page class already hints us to an important concept of Wicket. Wicket has pages. A page is something that is served to the user, an HTML page. And another important concept in Wicket is a strict separation of design and code. The design is done in simple standards compliant HTML files. I have prepared one such file. It's it only contains a form to create new newsletters and it has not any connected program logic yet. The form is not very pretty yet and we will also not implement it today. This is what we'll do in the next episode. For today we only want to add a simple label component to the form. So as I said, the design is strictly separated from the code and the code is a simple Java class that extends web page. We will now create the code for this um, HTML file for create newsletter.html. The way Wicked finds the code is by looking at the name of the file and the HTML file and the Java class have to be in the same package and have to have the same name. So we create the Java class in the package net David Tensor Wicked Newsletter Web Admin and we save it as create newsletter Java. Um, What's left now is we have to extend the web page class. The fact that it is a web page and has the name create newsletter hints wicked that it should load the file create newsletter.html when it loads this page. The class web page is a subclass of the page class we used earlier in our application class, so we could use this page as our home page, but we probably don't want to do this because this is an administration page. Um, the web page class is a special form of pages for serving HTML pages, and as most of the time it's the only page class you need. Later we will subclass this page class ourselves to add some project specific functionality. As I said before we do not want to use our administration page as the home page of the application but anyway we want to be able to access it so we want to mount it. That is we want to create a special URL admin add where we can find this page. After that when everything compiles again we can start the server and access this URL admin add and it should show the administration page which has not yet any code backing it, but it will show a rather static page showing the form. I start the server with Gradle Chatty Run and when you start it the first time it takes a little while to get up and running, but now it's there and we can access the page. As you can see the newsletter form that we looked at before is now running in our Wicket application. This brings us to another important concept in Wicket, component orientation. Everything you see on the page, like the text field or the button, will be components or can be components later. A component is some part of the HTML which you can access in code later and modify. 
what we want to do now is we want to create a very simple component, a label, which shows the number of newsletters. For this we create a span HTML tag and assign a special ID, the wicked ID, num newsletters. What we have to do now is we have to add this component to our page and we will do that in the constructor of the page. I want to add a label component so first I create a new label object. Every wicked component expects a wicked ID as its first constructor parameter and this wicked ID is how the component finds the markup in the HTML file. So this is how it finds the HTML tag where the component should be. And now to make sure the page class finds the component I have to add the label. This would already work but the label doesn't know what text to show yet so let's first specify a static text. This is a rather boring use case because a static text we could have also added in the HTML file but just to show you that the label will display the text. Now the label shows up in the page. What we really want to do here is display some information from our domain model and for this we can use the, the model that almost every wicked component supports. So the label does not really only show static texts, what it really does is take some value from a model. A model is anything that implements the wicked iModel interface and we use the property model which is very handy. The property model tells wicked take the first object, in this case this, and search for a property called newsletter model. We have already created a private variable newsletter model, so Wicked will use reflection to read the value of this variable and display this value in the web page. I reload and you see the web page displays the value 5. This value 5 is still static but you can imagine that you can use models and property models to access data from your domain, which we will do later in this screencast series. So those were the basics of Apache Wicket. We talked about pages, components and models and we created a simple label that wrote some text to the screen. In the next episode I will show you how to process user input. We will talk about forms and form components. This screencast only covers the basics of Apache Wicket. If you want to know more, just drop me an email. My address is business at davidtanzer.net and then we can talk about how we can work together.